So uh, for students who would be looking for, I guess, different ways of getting rid of their waste, um, what are some tips you'd give for first time people looking, looking to begin their worm co compost for the first time? Well, it's, it is a simple uh, method. You just want to make sure that it's well aerated, uh, that it doesn't get too moist. That's why we have the aeration holes. You want to make sure that they're happy, they have, that they have a balanced diet. Um, you also want to make sure that um, you're feeding in a, with some sort of method. Mm -hmm. So some people actually number their bin one, two, three, four, five, so they know where they last put their, their, uh, their waste. waste. And so they'll, you, you dig a trench, you'd put your well cut up waste in a trench and then you'd put back your, mm -hmm. the, the soil and uh, the carbon material on top. And then the, the next process. week, you, every week you're going through your bin and by the, by the time you get to the other end, where you started off should all be eaten. Okay. So it, do, it doesn't take too long. Uh, before uh, I asked you a question about uh, maybe it being smelly, because it's, mm -hmm. I don't smell anything right now. It's, no. it's, it's surprising, actually. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned <laughs> that if it does smell, that's a sign that something's going on that, that shouldn't be. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. Um, it, you can tell when your, your worms aren't happy. I'm surprised there's a worm trying to climb out here with <laughs> this bright light. <laughs> but uh, um, they tend to try and climb out of the environment if they're not happy. So it might mean that you've put in something that's rotting. So we wouldn't eat rotted food, so why would they? Yes. Um, it all, might also be an indication that uh, it might be too warm, because this is just for indoors. So if you're putting outdoors in the summer, you, have, you risk killing your whole colony. Um, uh, and also, if you've overfed, it might be too wet. They do need a humid environment, because there's a, there are chemical reactions happening on their skin. They need mm -hmm. that, that humidity. But if it's too humid, or too dry, they're, they're, they won't be happy. Okay. And so it's really, and smells, uh, I haven't smelled anything from mine, and it's I'm just, you have to observe mm -hmm. your worms and smell every time you, uh, you, you feed them. Um, R4, um, recently in 2006, has a series of statistics about some of the waste that happens on campus. Mm -hmm. um, would you be able to talk a little bit about um, some of the findings that you guys found about student waste? Yes, well, we do conduct a waste audit every year at Concordia, and we just finished our uh, last one two weeks ago. And it consists of just going through garbage bags and dividing up our waste into categories. And uh, for instance, in 2006 at the Loyola campus, 20, no, 57% of the waste was compostable. So, oh, so compostable is, is different. So what's compostable in a vermi bin wouldn't necessarily be part of those statistics, such as uh, meat, oil, okay. fat. You're not going to want to put that yeah, <laughs> in your worm bin either. Yeah. So, but that would be part of the st statistics that we use as okay. compostable waste at Concordia. So, so over half of what was being thrown away could be reused in some way. Reused or composted. Okay, so they were being it was being thrown away to landfills, basically. Yes, yes. Okay. And that actually increases our uh, greenhouse gas output a mm -hmm. lot. So composting in itself um, reduces our impact in terms of greenhouse gases. Uh, 200 tons of, uh, one ton of compostable waste creates 200 tons of greenhouse gases. Whereas when you compost, all those greenhouse gases are saved almost. So you're creating maybe four to five tons as opposed to 200 tons wow. in one ton of compostable waste. So it's a huge impact. Um, you mentioned earlier an initiative that's happening in Loyola. Uh, for a big compost program? can Yes, um, well we're also, as of May, I think it's May 15th, um, with uh, an official launch in September, <laughs> with all those who've helped, helped us, we have a 100 ton hot composter uh, coming in. It's about eight feet high, about three quarters the size of a bus, and um, it's an exciting project. We'll be able to to compost 100 tons of compostable waste on, on site. And we currently create, if I'm not mistaken, 160 tons of compostable waste every year. So it's a, a significant amount. Yes. And we'll be able to use all the compost that we've uh, created through this machine on the Loyola campus and all our flower beds. Yeah. And so it used to compost uh, pig carcasses. 
<laughs> so I used to put a few pigs in there and there'd be compost. Pig within. carcasses? Pig, yeah, carcasses. Oh my goodness. We bought it Bacon. from. It's an agricultural machine, actually. Oh. And so um, it creates waste in a much smaller time frame, too, within a week to two weeks. Oh, okay. As opposed to months in uh, what the facility that we have now at Loyola. So. Okay. Um, Big step. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great step for, mm -hmm. for R4 and for um, waste disposal in Canada. I guess um, r right now a lot of people are turning to what might be an easier method, you know, putting garbage in garbage bags and putting it on the curb and forgetting about it. So what do you think it'll take for um, methods like composting to become accepted by the mainstream? What do you think it might take? Well, I know for composting especially, it's becoming more popular. At uh, Generations Pack presentation yesterday, I was surprised to see that 25% of Canadians compost. I thought it would be much less than that. Mm -hmm. But um, That was the spe uh, David Suzuki and yes. a bunch of other... Yeah, and Peter Shifke and uh, Mohamed Shuri, who had started the 1% campaign. Crazy. So uh, I was happy to see that. But I know that composting is becoming more popular uh, in terms of institutions as well. There are institutional targets that governments give, um, and at the community level, commun at uh, different eco centers in different city in different neighborhoods, they're ha constantly offering vermicomposting. And the last one I attended had 25 people, and so that's at the community level. And if all the community organizations uh, communicate to each other. Mm -hmm. what they're doing in terms of waste management, composting, and then communicate that to the city. They see that there's an interest, the city communicates that to the province, so it's, it's, it's on all levels that it, it has to happen. But it is hard to change people's habits. Mm -hmm. um, I heard about the compost test trial where they actually pick up compost at the curb in Côte des Neige, and this woman refused her, her bin. But then she saw, I think it's in bags actually, and she saw that all her neighbors were doing it, so she called them back and gave it a try. Okay. So it's really, um, it's on all levels, because mm -hmm. I think this is a, a, a ward initiative as far as, far as I know. Okay. So if people would like to learn a little bit more about um, R4 and mm -hmm. some of the options for starting this kind of uh, worm composting, how can they get in touch with you guys? Well, there's the website of Sustainable Concordia. It's uh, dot sustainable dot concordia dot ca um, or r four dot concordia dot ca, and it shows all of the working groups that Sustainable Concordia has in terms of uh, there's the business conference, Sustainable Business Conference that happens every year, and um, uh, Alego, which deals with uh, bicycling to school and. Uh, voiturage, car sharing, <laughs> and um, so it, everything is, is uh, listed. And we actually have access to all of the um, compost information. Uh, we give uh, pamphlets at all of our workshops, and we, that pamphlet is actually on, that web, on the website. Okay. And we also have access to, uh, there's a worm swap every month where we sell our compost bins and we sell our worms as well. So. Nice. It's creeping through, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, the offices are at the corner of Guy and St. Catherine. Okay. And so it's and it's right above the farmer pre at 1257 Guy. Okay, so it's close, like close floor. to campus. Resume. Yes. All right. So thanks so much, Travis, for Thank speaking. You. And thanks for bringing in your wormies. Thanks. And uh, yeah, great. Thank you. <laughs> That's great.